When we focus on the breath like this, we're trying to train the mind, train good qualities in the mind. For the sake of something really good, something that's really worthy of respect in ourselves, which is our desire for a true happiness that doesn't harm anybody. This is why we bow down to the Buddha. This is why we have such an etiquette of respect around here. This is because the Buddha taught us something to respect, something that is worthy of respect in ourselves. The world teaches us that other things are worthy of respect, our desire for a quick fix. It's even gotten out that people are taking drugs in order to get a quick enlightenment fix, they say. But that's not the sort of thing the Buddha taught. The Buddha taught something that was deeper and much more worthy of respect. We're not just tripping out. He didn't just trip out. He found a way of finding happiness that doesn't harm anybody. And it's a true happiness, a happiness that doesn't change. And the desire for that is worthy of respect, because it helps us put all our other desires into the right perspective. And the problem is that other desires are awfully strong and they're awfully insistent. But we have to remember, just because something is pressing doesn't mean that it's important. It's when a desire is squeezing your nerves. You have to ask yourself, okay, is this going to be good for the long term? And if you've learned an attitude of respect for the fact that there is a happiness that doesn't harm anybody, is timeless, requires all the factors of the path, then it's a lot easier to say no to those vagrant desires. To say yes to something is more important, it takes more work, it takes more time, but will give better results in the long term. Our culture is so tuned into what's fast. 4G isn't fast enough, they're going to give us 5G, and it's going to fry our brains with all the waves going through the air, all for the sake of speed. But the Buddha is saying there's something that takes time, and takes energy, takes your dedication, all the good, solid virtues that require respect and deserve respect. And that something is totally harmless, totally unchanging. It's not there right in front of our eyes, so we have to keep remembering it. Which is why the word for refuge in Pali, sarnana, can also mean something you remember, something you hold in mind. So that when your other short-term desires come up, you can say yes or no based on whether they fall in line with your long-term desire, which is for happiness that doesn't turn on you. And so remember, have a lot of respect for that desire. And when, as we bow down to the Buddha, we bow down to the monks. It's out of respect for that desire we have in ourselves. What's good about the Buddha, what's good about the monks, is that they remind us that what's inside us, this de desire we have for genuine happiness, is something that should take priority over everything else. So when we bow down to them, we're also bowing down to what's good in ourselves. And as we show respect for one another, we're showing respect for what's good in the other person and what's good in ourselves as well. This helps keep things in perspective. <laughs>